you can hear it. It's just a little bit, a little, little bit muffled. Make an actual pause. I won't go and let's go back to the scene now. So uh, I'll just leave a pause here for a second.
Women Championships 2014. Now, what an incredible event we have for you right here on the live stream. So no matter where you are, all you need is a laptop and some internet connection to make sure you can keep up to date with all of the action over the next six days. Now, I am not alone for the next six days either. I'm joined by... It's pretty, pretty easy to give you an introduction, Kerry, and we all know who you are, but Olympic silver medalist, two times world champion. Firstly, welcome to Tolcross International Swimming Centre. Secondly, how is it to be here on the other side of the pool? It's really weird, I must admit, um, coming here and not actually having to get into the water and swim is actually quite novel and quite nice, I'm, quite nice, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So, people will be wondering, are you still here? Have you retired? What's going on? Because you're not obviously competing at the moment. No, I've not retired. I am still, I'm still training. I've just taken a year off of competitive racing this year. So, still in the pool, still doing about five or six sessions a week instead of the ten that I would normally do. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Now, you must be excited because obviously everybody at the pool knows you. Everyone's been coming, saying hi to you <laughs> the last couple of days. Um, who are you excited to watch compete over the whole event? Well, it's going to be really, really quite cool, I think, being here on this side and, and being able to talk about all the people that I know. And there's a lot of youngsters actually coming through, so I'm really excited to see Sophie Taylor swim in the 100 breaststroke. Uh, we have James Guy as well, who was fifth in the World Championships last year. So there's a lot of really special racing going to happen this week, I'm sure of it. There's a lot being discussed about James Guy, hasn't there? Because he's really, as you say, up and coming on the scene. It's swimming incredibly well. Yeah, I went to see him a few weeks ago, and he was just so ready. He was just like, I wish it was tomorrow. I, I really wish it was tomorrow. I'm just ready. I just want to do it. So <laughs> I think that he is going to you know, blow a few people out of the water at this competition. Now, you must kind of empathize with these people, knowing having that bit of grit in, in the teeth there, because that's that's you all over, isn't it, Carrie Ann? Yeah, I think um, at this kind of competition, uh, predominantly it's, it's the England qualification, so the English guys are going to be just focused against the clock. They're not really going to be worried about the Scottish or about the Welsh. Not here anyway, I'm sure, you know, in the summertime they will. So the times are really quite tough to make, so I think everybody here is just going to be have to be focused on their event and what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Because it is, it is so important, isn't it? This, it's kind of that one opportunity, they've got to go for it, haven't they, this week? Yeah, this is the only chance that the England team have to qualify, and they have to be as fast as they can in the morning and in the finals as well. So, speaking of in the morning, who are you looking forward to, to watching swim? Because we've got some great events this morning, haven't we, to open the event? Yeah, I, I can't wait to see um, Amy Wilmot swim the corner medley. She had a great swim earlier in the year, and then James Guy as well for the 400. But I know he's Scottish, but you can never forget Michael Jameson. He, this is his home pool, yeah. and he is going to do some fantastic swimming here, I'm sure of it. Because there is a lot to be said, isn't there, for being in your home pool, being kind of used to the pool and used to the environment and everything. There is a lot to be said about creating those faster times. Yeah, well, Michael was here last week and he did a number one in the world time um, in a 208 with 200 breaststrokes. So I know he was a bit disappointed with the time. So I think he's really going to be gunning to go a much quicker time today. And anybody else that you've got your eye on today? Well, I think, um, like I said, Amy Wilmot and James Guy, they're the, the first two events, and they're just going to um, hopefully start it off really well for everybody to just carry on, and the momentum will carry forward for the rest of the week. Because Amy Wilmot, she is on fire, isn't she, at the moment? Yeah, she had a really great swim. I mean, she went a 4.33 for the Borna medley um, at Flanders in, you know, in their January time, I think yeah, it was, yeah. sorry. So she is going to want to swim well here. She's going to want to show everybody that she can do that time consistently. Mm -hmm. Now, any words of advice for any of our <laughs> swimmers? Because, you know, it's, it's tough, isn't it? It's down to this. This is the all-important moment that matters. Yeah. So what do you think that is kind of going through their mind at the moment, with a bit of pressure as well, thrown yeah. into the mix? If I was here, and, and this was my, you know, when I was racing, it would just be about concentrating on yourself. There's so many people here, so many different things going on, different qualifications for different people. So if I was them, just concentrate on your race and what you need to do. Okay, well, that's, that's, uh, that's <laughs> enough advice as, as much as they need. So we're going to hand over to Ross and Bob, who are going to give our commentary for the event. Thank you, Hannah. Good morning. Welcome to Glasgow and the British Gas Swimming Championships of 2014. Yes, we're excited and we are enthused about what we are going to see this morning. What we're not going to see, sadly, in the opening event is a head-to-head -head between Amy Wilmot and Hannah Miley. Hannah Miley is the British record holder. Amy Wilmot, the English record holder in the 400 metres individual medley. And as you were mentioning in your uh, chat there, Best time in the world so far, 4.33.64. We will see Amy Wilmot, the Ross Stamport. We will not sadly see Hannah Miley. She did what she had to do last week and uh, made the Scottish team for the Commonwealth Games on the back of that. Well, good morning, Bob. Yes, you're absolutely right. We haven't seen Hannah Miley here in Glasgow. She's actually competing this week, but not doing her main event, the 400 medley. Like you said, she qualified last week 
in the Scottish Championship. So I guess for her, the job's done and she's going to focus on the other events that she just narrowly missed out on last week. And the same last week, by the way, just give you a measure of what we're going to see today. Uh, as ever with the 400s, we go straight to finals, as we will do here with the 200s as well. Uh, 200s go straight to finals, the 50 and the 100s go out semi finals. Hannah Miley last week at Scottish Nationals here did 435 48. Now, there are some people speculating, Ross, that Amy Wilmot's in the kind of shape that she might challenge Hannah Miley's British record here this week. Well, that'll be a, certainly a tall ask, but, uh, you know, she's really come on strength and strength over the last couple of years. She made the Olympic team, you know, just, over, just under two years ago, and she really is putting in some great form, and, you know, it's going to be great that we've got that competition here in Britain, because Hannah really has been out on her own for, for so many years. First event of the morning in the 400 metres individual medley. Heat number one, we have three swimmers going to start. Melanie Hall of Hillingdon in lane three, Gabriella Crawford of Nova Centurion in four, and Hannah Jones of Stockport Metro in lane five, 15, 16, and 15 respectively. Hopefully cracking on for personal best. Their time's in the five-minute range, so they'll be hoping to close in on a five-minute time here in the opening heats. We have five heats in total. We'll have to wait until heat number five for Amy Wilmot. And she'll be looking again to go better than she did in Flanders with that time of 4.33.64. But here's a measure of uh, the juniors coming through. We always talk about this, Ross, when we do these events. Although this event mainly is about those who uh, want to progress to a bigger event later in the year, uh, the youngsters with this uh, facility here have the chance to shine, have a chance to maybe have uh, big drop-downs in time. Yeah, what great opportunities for, for certainly the younger swimmers to swim in the Commonwealth pool. This pool is going to be used in you know, just over, well, I think it's about 12 weeks' time for the Commonwealth Games. So they're going to have a chance of getting out of it, walking out. In some, you know, this is going to be the biggest crowd they've probably swam in front of. And you know, it's about dealing with those nerves, dealing with the pressure, and hopefully posting a good time. And also, the age range of around 16, 17, especially for the, for the female, they can go on to European juniors. So this will be a selection um, qualification meet for the European juniors. So there is something to play for if you're around that age. So you're talking to Sean Kelly, who's in charge of the Stockport Metro program this way. He says there's a very good feel, very good buzz about the club at the moment. And they are bringing through some swimmers. Of course, many of their swimmers, uh, Carrie Ann being one of those who used to be uh, with Stockport Metro. James Gillard has uh, recently retired from Stockport Metro. So they're looking for a new generation to come through. And hopefully it starts here in Glasgow. This uh, for... His point of view is an important year, but not the most important year, because we've got Worlds next year, and then, of course, the Olympics the year after. But this is kind of a stepping stone to that, and we'll be hoping that uh, Melanie Hall can, uh, as well as Hannah Jones, can go a bit quicker than she has done before. Entry time is 5.05.36. At the moment, she's heading the field by a good couple of body lengths. Fantastic opening, 100 metres on the butterfly, and now she's extending that lead onto the backstroke. It will be very interesting to see what she's got on the breaststroke because we, we talk a lot, Bob, about the breaststroke being the most important stroke on the medley event. If you have a good breaststroke, you tend to normally have a good IM. And if you have a weak breaststroke, that's where the rest of the field can naturally catch up with you. And it looks like that that probably might be the case. Gabriella Crawford from Nova Centurion looks like she has a good breaststroke and she's now eaten into that lead over Hannah Jones that she's created over the opening 200 metres. Yeah, turning into quite a good race this, very tight. Hannah Jones on uh, the far side in lane five and four, Gabriella Crawford, whose breaststroke is bringing her right back alongside these top four Metro swimmer and Melanie Hall, also not with a bad breaststroke, in lane three. So when they turn at the next turn, which will be 250, this could well be all three of them pretty much in line. Just about holding on, but nowhere near the lead. Look at that, they are going to come pretty much into the wall together at 200. 50. In fact, they might have a new leader in Melanie Hall at the turn here. Just Gabriella Crawford. They are separated by barely any time whatsoever. There's about a second separating one, two, and three. Well, there was, but now the swimmer closest to us, Melanie Hall, is really pushing on. Extremely interesting. You see the, the 200 meter mark. Hannah Jones was, was, was out in front, and, and Melanie Hall was last. In 50 meters, Melanie Hall now is winning and is extending that lead over the other two girls in this field. 
this is how important the breaststroke leg is, especially on a 400 meters medley where you have so much time and so much space that you can catch up or you can extend your lead. And that's exactly what um, Melanie Jett Hall has done here. She's not only caught up, but she's extending the lead in the final 100 meters. Ellington looking for their first victory. They're changing their coach. Their coach, in fact, has just done his last session with the club. Moving to Loughborough is Dave. So uh, this is the product of what he's been doing with Melanie up to this stage. And it seems to be working very well. And she's powering on the freestyle. That lead was only about a couple of meters before. But look at her power on the freestyle here. It's been such a great feeling. She's turned first with 100 meters ago. This is the first event, the first race. You know, everyone's now going to be looking at and seeing how these girls are racing. And she's just powering down that coming into the final turn, 150 to go. And she's got a lead of around about what, seven meters of the rest of the field. And that was all down on the breaststroke and the first leg of the freestyle. The gap is considerable. Can't tell you on the time because it's not showing her split time, but we'll get a finish time for her. As you can see, five, six, seven, eight meters. She's clear. Now she'll be looking to get in around the five minute mark. She's not going to quite do that. Her entry time is 5.05.40. How close can she get to that? She's not going to be too far shy of 5.05.40. See so if she can get inside it. Tight, just outside, 5.06.04 for Melanie Hall of Hillingdon. Second place finisher will be Gabriella Crawford in the early pace setter. Hannah Jones coming in third. The gap between one and two in the end was eight seconds, 8.4 seconds between the winner, Melanie Hall. Uh, she, Gabriella Crawford in second, and this is how she finished it off. I said she didn't necessarily put her head down. There's a couple of things there she can work on breathing into the finish. But what a pace race that was. Very tough was a three of you, obviously, in a race like that. We'll have a full contingent for heat number two of the 400 meters individual medley for women. Chloe Golding goes in lane one for Ellesmere. Two is Isabel Griffiths, obviously of Birmingham. We have Jennifer King, North Esher in three. Rachel Byrne of Wigan, the best club in four. Georgia Nixon and Middlesbrough in five. Six is Sophie Weller of Dover. Abigail Humphreys of City of Coventry in seven. And Catherine Brown of City of Peterborough in lane eight. That's taking you through the one to eight as they finish their first 50 of the 400 metres individual medley. And uh, the leader on the butterfly at 50 is Georgia Nixon of Middlesbrough. Yeah, that's right, Get going out fast. The thing you've got to do, on, on the, especially on the 400 metres iron, we talked about the breaststroke already, but you've got to play to your strengths. You can't get sucked into other people's races. So if you've got a really strong butterfly, you better, you've got to use that. And if you've got a strong backstroke, you've got to really target that. And you've got to really work hard on that breaststroke leg, because that we've already mentioned, that is that can make the difference. And really, the last 100 is, is who's got the most energy to, to finish off the race. Very few swimmers have equal strength on their strokes. There's always one that's uh, a lot stronger and always, it seems, one that's a lot weaker. And uh, it's an interesting race, this, because there's quite a spread. You're looking at lane four with Rachel Byrne, who was uh, the leader at the second turn. Catherine Brown is in lane eight on the far side, and she was second. But as we all say with the IM, it changes radically. You saw that from the opening heat, where you have the leader at the halfway stage finishing in third place, and the third place at halfway winning the race so um, the breaststroke leg which will of course come after we finish the backstroke leg will be the one that will probably separate them all out but that's the 150 stage georgia nixon and middlesbrough with an entry time of uh, 458 86 is leading the field and it's got about half a body length over the rest so obviously the girl now that's leading this event is going to be training with Amy Wilmot, who is coming up in heat number five, both from Middlesbrough, Georgia Nix, and Amy Wilmot. So she'll have a lot of experience of, of even just training against Amy Wil Wilmot. Knowing how to actually train against somebody is, is you know, really, really important, and you can always pull that into races. And it looks now she's going to turn second at the 200 meter mark. Not much between lanes four, Rachel Byrne of Wigan. And uh, they're, in fact, they're pretty much side by side on the breaststroke leg as well. There was uh, barely any difference, about half a second between Byrne and Nixon 
at the end of the backstroke and the breaststroke, whereas well, we saw a lot of differential happening in the first race. These two are pretty similar in terms of breaststroke style, in terms of breaststroke quality as well. Here, starting to stretch out of the rest of the field. These two are going head to head. Got 150 meters to go once they approach this turn, and it does look like they're almost stroke for stroke as they're coming into that turn. And they actually do turn what, less than 0.1, separating them with three lengths to go. Yeah, it's a cracking race, and just wait to see if anybody else can uh, get back into the mix. The closest to that would be Abigail Humphreys in lane seven. She's come up into third place, but quite some way adrift of the top two. And it seems to again be changing perspective here. Georgia Nixon, I think, coming right alongside Rachel Byrne. So they come towards the end of this presto leg, but they're almost as though you can almost put a bit of rope between the two of them and kind of tow them along because there is barely any difference. Probably, well, there was half a second difference between them at the last turn. There won't be much more between them as they go into the freestyle leg. In fact, they're going to turn virtually together. The gap is 0.15. So now this comes down to who's actually spent the most energy over the first 300 metres and who's got that bite between their teeth that they want to close out this second heat of the British Gas Swimming Championships. They're going to be the fastest time of the morning so far and they want to post a brilliant time. Again, some of these girls will be going for European junior times. The two girls out in front are not, but the rest of the field will be looking to aim to get that qualification time later on. Watching Abigail Humphreys of Coventry swimming her own race in third place. She's not too far adrift either. She's probably not going to quite catch them. It is Rachel Byrne who leads by four tenths of a second at the final turn. In third place is Isabel Griffiths, and she is about... Well, about three tenths of a set, three seconds behind, but uh, this one is going to be going right down to the finish. Certainly is. Past the 25 metres to go, Mark, now approaching the 15 metres to go. It does look like it is Rachel Byrne that's just edging out in front now as we come into the final 10 metres. Rachel Burns, entry time 4.58, she's going to be just outside that, she's the first swimmer under five minutes this morning though, 4.59.28 for Rachel Burns, second is Georgia Nixon in 5.0007, Isabel Griffiths edging out Abigail Humphreys into fourth place, third for Griffiths 5.02.19, and in fifth place, Catherine Brown, 5.05.83. Remember, just the top eight times go through to the final. Come in, so that's it, head down into the finish. That's how to do it. She's obviously immensely tired after that 400 meters. One of the hardest events in the program. Not one you'll see me doing, no. or, you, or you, Bob. We, we, we were actually asking that last night, asked whether you have ever done a 400 iron. And I imagine every swimmer has done pretty much every event. So at some point, you were the Loughborough boys were going, well, we need somebody with a 400 iron. Ross, you can do it. <laughs> you, 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 you can chip in on that one, uh, can't you? I don't actually think I've ever done one long course. Uh, my breaststroke was absolutely terrible. Shockingly bad. It's always the case with uh, people who do freestyle, some people who do backstroke, that uh, inevitably, as we mentioned, it's the breaststroke that... Uh, sorts out the uh, the wheat from the chaff, if you like. On to heat number three of the 400 metres individual medley for women. Laura Gillingham goes for Derwent side in one. Daniela Whiting of Aqua in two. Emma Kane of uh, Millfield in three. Elisa Adams, sorry, all Adams. That's a single, wasn't she, Elisa Adams? All her Adams of uh, Geary in four. Sally Wood of Warrender in five. Six is Fern Davis of Swansea. Seven is Chantel Austin of Blackpool. And Elizabeth Hopkins of Portsmouth. Here's in lane eight. Interesting in terms of entry times. We've got a whole clutch of 457s. The only 456er in here is Aurea Adams of Geary. And of course, that is Hannah Miley's club. She goes in lane four. That's right. It's interesting to see that you've got a couple of swimmers here that are from the same club. And it's like I say, it's interesting that Hannah Miley is not going to be swimming here, but all Adams comes from the same club and there's got 456. So, you know, promising swimming, swimmer coming from the same club. But we've already spoke about uh, George Nix coming from Middlesbrough and Amy Mil Wilmot coming from Middlesbrough. So, you know, you tend to see that, you know, certain clubs or certain uh, coaches can produce certain swimmers, and, and certainly that's the case in in these swimmers. Well, looking at the far side, looking at Chantel Austin, who has a lovely breaststroke, really nice, smooth rhythm. Uh, they will say that if you're a, a good breaststroker, a backstroker, you should be able to rest a tray 
on your chest and keep glasses there and they won't move, they won't fall over, they won't spill any drop and she is absolutely perpendicular to the water. Really lovely brush with backstroke there. Yeah, and also, you know, a lot of swimmers will, will swim backstroke with a cup on their head and they'll fill it up with water and they'll keep the cup on their head in. And that, they'll swim 50 metres or 20, 25 metres with that cup and that cup will not leave their forehead. Um, you know, it's, it's, it really is a skill, but it's what you need to do on backstroke. You need to keep your head nice and still. You, you rotate from your shoulders and your hips, but your head stays perfectly still. Well, Chantal Austin on one side will be unaware of what's happening down this side because Daniela Whiting is her closest challenger, but at the moment she's probably about half a body length back as they come to the end of the backstroke just. Chantal Austin by less than a second from Daniela Whiting in second place. Third is Laura Gillingham in lane one. Of course, here comes the uh, breaststroke leg, which may well separate them out. And I say at this stage, as often is the case in these kind of races, uh, at uh, lane two probably will be unaware what lane seven is doing. We'll just have to crack on and do our own race. It's interesting to see, normally you'll see the, the spearhead formation, the fastest swimmers are in lane four and five, but in this case, at the 200 meter mark, you've got lane seven and lane number two that are leading out. And it looks like it is going to be lane two. It's got a fantastic breaststroke. Daniela Whiting is going to turn first by some four, three or four meters. Well, she was about half a second down at the last term, and of course when they changed it to a different stroke, that has changed things radically and rapidly because Laura Whitey now finds herself three seconds behind. All Adams is in third place for Geary. And this is a very, very powerful statement being put down by Daniela Whiting in lane number two. She has stretched the field, she's broken the field, and uh, we're waiting to see who might respond. At the moment, responding the best is Sally Wood of Warrender in lane five. That's right, but she still has that three or four metre advantage coming into the second to last turn. Turn onto the, the front, onto the freestyle, and as long as she's got some energy left, I expect her to see this race out. But it will depend. She is breathing to the to the other side, so she's not going to see the challengers moving up onto her shoulder. But she will be able to see them on the final leg. Well, she had a sizable advantage at that turn. Two and a half seconds it was between first and second. There's nothing like that now, because that gap is being eaten into by Sally Wood in five. And in fact, so they're, they're separated by three lanes. Sally Wood will be aware exactly of what Daniela Whiting is doing. She's looking towards her. Daniela Whiting is looking the other way, so she won't be aware that that lead has virtually disappeared at the turn. Austin leads, but the lead is now just eight tenths of a second over all Adams in second and Emma Kane in third. Sally Wood had a fantastic first 50 of the freestyle leg. She is seven years older, so she's going to be a lot stronger and certainly a lot more experienced in this race. But what a swim from Daniela Whiting in, in lane number two. She's not bothered about reputation or certainly not bothered about age. She's gone out there, swam her own race, and this is going to be a fantastic swim. And I still think she's just, just edging out in front still. Yeah, I think she's going to get uh, quite a big PB if she can just crack on and finish things here. She's got a PB, definitely. 4.56.57 is Daniela Whiting's time. It was quite close in the end. In fact, there was only two tenths of a second between her and Sally Wood in second. 4.56.77. Fern Davis in third, 4.59.14. And they were the only three to go sub five minutes this morning, but a very good swim and a very good finish by Daniela Whiting in lane number two. Cracking swim. Mentioned already, from her own race, out in the, one of the outside lanes. Sometimes it, it can be your, your advantage because people can't actually see you. And people feel the pressure of being in lane four and five because you are actually the, the fastest swimmers of the heat. And people tend to look at you and, and tend to look at you to set the pace. So if you are in an outside lane, you can actually swim your own race and, and kind of go unnoticed. And that's exactly what happened there. Right, we're on to... Uh those who will really seriously be pushing for a top eight place here. I'm sure that uh, Daniela Whiting will hope that time might be good enough for her to get into the top eight. And certainly the last two cyclically seeded heats coming up now. Holly Hibbert of Southport's in one, Eleanor Sheridan of Loughborough now in two, Camilla Hattersley of City of Glasgow in three, Daniela Lowe of uh, City of Derby in four, Alice Tennant of Swansea in five, Candice Hall of City of Leicester in six, Alexandra Kay of Hillingdon in seven, and Lucy McKenzie of Cockermouth in lane eight. First 50 is completed, Alice Tennant is setting the pace, a 29-6-1 split for her. Yep. 
All can change, but it is Alice Tennant from Swansea University taking the first 50 out. Danielle Lowe is back in eighth place. She's also one of the fastest swimmers. She, well, she's the fastest swimmer in this field. And this is probably going to show you how... Oh, no, sorry, Danielle Lowe is, is in first place. I think our, uh, at the time pad didn't work there. This is Danielle Lowe first. It's going to be turning for the first 100 metres. Just moved club to the City of Derby, being coached by Melanie Marshall. And whatever Mel's doing with her is working pretty well because she leads at the halfway stage in 103.45. Second is Eleanor Sheridan of Loughborough and third is Candice Hall. So at the moment it's in the East Midlands, 1-2-3, Ross. That's what we like to see, especially if you're from the East Midlands like I am. But it is Danielle Lowe that is... Certainly she's got two good strokes at the front and a, and a breaststroke is, is something that is also very good and she's a gutsy swimmer on the freestyle. So, you know, she's a very big talent, Danielle Lowe. She works incredibly hard. You know, anything that you give her, she'll just keep keep taking, keep taking, and she just works and works. And, and uh, certainly now, it's, it's, this is the time to shine. This is the time to show your the, the work you've been putting in over, over the, the winter months. Um, and, and she has moved coaches and she's being coached by Melanie Marshall, so it'll be interesting to see how she goes in this 400 medley. Yeah, we're getting some incorrect uh, timings on the splits of the far end, because she's got her back in eighth place. We know that she's not in eighth place. She's in, well, was in first place, but she's not in first place anymore, because lane six of Willby Candy's Hall of City of Leicester will turn in first place at the halfway stage. 2.17.65 is her time second is danielle Lowe. third place is alexandra k so that time for the split for candies 217 65 217 86 for danielle very tight between one and two and indeed tight between one two and three because alexandra k is only three tenths off the lead it's candy's horse and danielle Lowe look like got great breaststroke legs looks like neither of them are letting each other get too far ahead it's still going to be Danielle Lowe that's going to be turning first with three lengths to go, closely followed by Candice Hall from City of Leicester. So Danielle Lowe, I so said we can't at the moment give you a split time for her because there is a, a bit of a problem with that pad in her lane. We well, can just visibly see that she's winning this by uh, quite some considerable distance at the moment. So all that matters is what she's like at 300 when she comes to turn next time. Her entry time, by the way, is 4.42.24. So that'll be uh, considerably quicker than anybody else who we've seen this morning. So that will uh, maybe put down a little benchmark for Amy Wilmot, who goes in the final heat that comes next. This is heat number four. And the moment is being totally and utterly controlled by Danielle Lowe of City of Derby. She's going to have a big lead going into that final 100. The lead between one and two is over three. In fact, three and a half seconds between Danielle Lowe in first and Alexandra Kay has moved up into second. She most of that damage in the last 75 metres of that breaststroke leg. Candice Hall was with her for the first 25 metres, but then she just edged out in front, and certainly down the last 25 metres of the breaststroke leg, that's where she really kind of separated the field. And this will be, you know, this will do her confidence a world of good. And when you do change coaches, you don't actually know how it's going to go. Training could be fantastic, you, know, you could be feeling good, you could be in the best shape possible, but until you actually get in and compete, you, know, you don't know if all that work that you've been doing is the right work and, and it's been the right move. So this will do her confidence the world of good. And like I said, she is a talented swimmer. She's very, very gutsy. And this is a, a commanding swim from, from Daniela Lowe. It is just tying up a little bit. Or if she's not, the swimmer alongside her, Camilla Hattersley, is uh, really putting a, a last burst here on the freestyle. It's going to be Daniela Lowe to win it, but not by huge margin like it looked like being because that lead is being eaten into massively by Camilla Hattersley. 4.50.22 is the winning time in the end. There was only 15 one hundredths of a second between first and second. That's how close it got. Another stroke of probably the City of Glasgow swimmer would have won that. But Lucy McKenzie in third, 4.52.94. And in fourth place, Alexandra K 4.53.14. So fastest time of the morning by quite some way for the winner there. And these are the details of the 1 to 8. Daniello 450 22. Alice Tennant, the only one not to break the five minute barrier. Right, Amy Wilmot, fastest in the world at the moment. 433 64. 
is the time that she sets at the Flanders Cup in Antwerp. Hannah Miley, 4.35.48 last week in this very pool. So we have at the moment a British 1-2, or in Commonwealth Games year, an English 1, a Scottish 2. Amy Wilmot should be uh, far too strong for anybody else in this field. I'll give all the, the other names as well, because you may not mention them too often. Sarah Bailey of City of Peterborough in one, Abby Wood of Deventio in two, Ennis Jackson of St. Felix School in three, Amy we mentioned in four, Amber Keegan of Nova Centurion in five, another Nova Centurion swimmer, Rosie Rudin in six, Georgia Coates of City of Leeds in seven, and Chloe Hanman in lane eight for City of Peterborough. So at the first split, as you'd imagine, it is Amy Wilmot, who is uh, not massively in front yet, but uh, once we get into the backstroke leg, say when we get into the breaststroke leg, she certainly should be, but she's being pushed all the way here, early stages by Ellis Jackson, and also by Abby Wood in lane two. There you see, it is going to be Amy Wilmot that does turn first in 104. Point two nine. It's interesting this race. Um, you know, you've seen the actual the, the present 400 meter swimmers in, in terms of Amy Wilmot, but you're also seeing the, the future in, in the likes of Abby Wood, uh, Rosie Rudin, Amber Keegan, Georgia Coates. They're 16, 17, and certainly uh, in in Abby Wood's case and Georgia Coates, they're only 15 years of age. So you see in the, the present in, like I say, in Amy Wilmot, but the future in, in those other swimmers. Now, the interesting situation, obviously, for Amy Wilmot, even though it is straight from heats to final in the 400 IM, she knows she's considerably quicker than anybody else in this field, so she doesn't have to bust a gut here. she want to do a credible time, but she won't need to do a particularly quick time. She can save all that for tonight. At the moment, she is, as we expected, controlling things in lane number four on the backstroke. The interest, really, I think, for us to see what everybody else surrounding her does. So we expect Amy to win this by quite a big margin, but uh, still trying to keep pace with her. Not too far adrift as Ellis Jackson of St. Felix School in lane number three. In five, Amber Keegan is uh, just finding the pace a little bit too strong. Rosie Rudin, however, of Nova Centurion looking good. The gap, nearly three seconds between Wilmot and Jackson at the halfway stage with Chloe Hannon in third place. Yeah, I agree with you about uh, Amy Wilmot not having to bust her gut to make the final, but if she wants to do anything, in, certainly in the international stage, she needs to put a strong heat performance in and then see how she can re recover over the next six or seven hours and then come back and do another world-class time in the evening because, you know, in, in Britain you can get away with it, but when she gets to, to the World Championship, she's going to have to do a lifetime best in the morning just to qualify for the final and then she's going to have to come back in the evening and do another PB to then hopefully move her up in the rankings and you know if she does want to start challenging for medals on the international stage which every swimmer does that's the way she needs to do it that's the way she needs to practice here in, in domestically so when she does go into international then she is prepared for it and she, she knows how to recover from that hard swim in the morning and that was the problem for her really at the 2012 london olympics is that she was ranked i think ninth going in she was right on the cusp of making the final it's exactly what happened she didn't quite make the final uh, she wasn't a massively outside making the final, but it was just that kind of margin of error, and the error kind of fell on her side rather than the other side, sadly. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's like everybody, you know, in the morning you feel very sluggish, and it's no difference to these swimmers. Yes, they do get up at five or six o'clock in the morning, they do swim, you know, two, three hundred lengths in the morning before either going to school or work or going back home to rest, but you know, the body isn't awake yet, so you need to learn those techniques for how to get up. Do you get up? A couple of hour, hours earlier you know, do you you know have a coffee or how do you get your body awake so you can perform to the best of your ability in the min in the morning and then how do you recover to do it all over again six or seven hours later well she is as anticipated as predicted dominating this field she's going to have a massive lead we can't tell you what it is at the moment because uh, her time is not registering at that pad but by the time she comes back down this end and touches, we'll know exactly. And uh, visibly, it looks like five, six seconds, maybe a little bit more between Amy Wilmot. The uh, interesting thing from our point of view, and indeed from hers, is what kind of time she's going to post. It's not going to be in the 4.33 range, is what she did in Antwerp earlier in the season, but it's going to be not massively shy of that, around 4.40, 4.40.70 to be precise, let's look at the gap, it's going to be all of 5 seconds, maybe 6 seconds, maybe 7 seconds, 8 seconds nearly, <laughs> yeah, 7.8, 7 we'll get my calculations right here, Alice Jackson finishing in 2nd, 
448.51 for her. Rosie Rudin in third, 449.43. And fourth place for Abby Wood. So Amy Watt doing exactly what she wants and exactly what she needs. And no Hannah Miley to race this morning. So it was all about her against the clock. And even though she was, you know, seven seconds off a certainly a season best this year, that was a commanding swim, and, and you know she certainly would have would have tested her energy systems there. It looked very easy down the last 50 uh, or the last 100, should I say, really. Um, so there's plenty more to give for Amy Wilmot, but that is a quality time to post in the morning. Um, she will have to go quicker in certainly the World Championships if she wants to make the final. Uh, Conwell's, you know, it's going to be difficult. No, but she'll know that and she'll be have the, the adrenaline from the crowd when she gets to the Commonwealth Games to be able to, to post a world-class time in the morning and come back up in the evening. So fastest by quite some way and we expect her to do likewise tonight, looking for a nice quick time for England, maybe a new English record, who knows later on today. That's Amy Wilmot winning the 400 IM. She certainly doesn't look out of breath. Now, Kerry ann it's, it's tough, isn't it, for these medley swimmers because you know that they're going to be competing in lots of events because they are great at every single individual event. So they've got a busy week, haven't they? So what, what was Amy going for there? Would, would she be pacing that race? or? I think that was a really good heat swim from Amy, yeah. um, but she'll have a, a pretty stacked program this week. I know that she wants to do really well in the freestyle events as well. So I think that she probably knew that she was going to be out in front. Hannah doesn't swim, didn't swim the full yeah, medley today, yeah. so she didn't have to swim so hard. So still a great heat swim for her. I think maybe she'll be really looking forward to going under her best time again tonight. Mm -hmm. Because she's had a great year, hasn't she? Beating her own record earlier on this year. Um, now, Danielle Lowe had a great swim, and we were chatting about her training programme earlier, weren't we? Yeah, well, Danielle, she's got the second fastest time for the for the England um, selection at the moment, so yeah. I think she, she'll be looking to kind of go under that time. She's got a three-second drop-off, but yeah. yeah, her training regime is a little <laughs> bit hectic. She trains one week at home in Liverpool, with, and her mum just watches her. She's so in her, her mum kind of has a stopwatch yeah. and times her and yeah, helps her she literally swam, swims in a gym and then yeah. she spends two weeks at the Sea of Derby with Mel. So she lives in an Ibis for two weeks at home for a week. OK, well, more action to come, of course, for the men's 400 metre freestyle. Heat number one. And in total, we will bring you six. This is going to be a very, very competitive event. No Robbie Rennick, sadly, but like with the women's 400 IM, we hope to have a head-to-head -head with Hannah Miley and Amy Wilmot. Well, Robbie has decided to uh, opt for mainly, I think, backstroke events here this week, having done what he needed to do at the Scottish Nationals last week. But lots of uh, English interest in this, and indeed Welsh interest as well, because we'll see uh, Jain Lloyd going in this. Which Jain Lloyd are we going to see in 2014? So promising, made the Olympic team in 2012. And we'll look at that a little later on after giving you the two to seven in heat number one. And in lane number two, it is uh, Stevenson Gaylor of Nova Centurion, Alexander Hunter in three for Nova, Suleiman Butt of Aberdeen goes in lane four, Benjamin Levart of Ealing in five, Oliver Jeremy of Hammond and Waterlooville in six, and Samuel Richards of City of Coventry in lane number seven. It's an event in which Britain has a very good pedigree over the years, the 400 metres freestyle, are we going to have a champion emerging from here? Yeah, certainly in, in the Commonwealth, we've, we've done very, very well over, over this uh, discipline. Um, and, and certainly, I think that you know, looking forward into, into 12 weeks' time, we have a very good chance of, of certainly being on, on the podium again. Um, whether that's going to be an Englishman, a Scottishman or a Welshman, who knows? Uh, because this, you know, each one of those nations has a fantastic 400-metre freestyler. Fastest in the world at the moment is David McKeon of Australia, 3.43.72, best of the Brits, who will be coming up later on, James Guy, 3.47.75, the second of the Brits is Dan Wallace, 3.49.64, but he's not here, he's gone back to America. Yeah, so Dan Wallace came last week, swim at the, the, the Scottish Nationals, um, qualified. For, for, or certainly was nominated for, for the Scottish team and now has gone back to America to, to put more training in. And I think that's, you'll see that a lot this week is the Scottish, the Scottish had their national championships last week and you could qualify for the, the Commonwealth Games there. And then they entered this week as more of a backup if, they ha if things didn't go well last week. So you'll probably see a lot of swimmers, a lot of Scottish swimmers that have pulled out from, from the British championships because they've already done the qualification time that they needed and now they're going to get back to training. This is the same with Hannah Miley. I spoke to her, her earlier and she's already back in training now because she's saying there's only 12 weeks to go before the Commonwealth Games. 
Well, I shouldn't have overlooked uh, Robbie Rennick, who's got the second fastest time, because uh, he did 3.48.34 last week, which was uh, slightly in advance of Dan Wallace's time. Both of them have made the uh, Scottish team for the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow later on in the year. But we're looking at mainly English and Welsh competitors, although some of the Welsh are pre-selected for that event back in this pool later in the year. Suleiman Butt then, and that term, is leading second place to Stevenson Gardner in lane two and Benjamin Levert in third place. But this is time to uh, be a race. It's all about the top two, the others behind just trying to get into the slipstream of the leader in the second place, but this will be the 300 turn. Let's see what uh, is going to happen here with 100 to go. It is Benjamin Levart has uh, moved into first place. Samuel Richards is in second. Alexander Hunter is in third. Time at the turn for Levart is 3.03.66. It looks very, very strong. A nice stroke, a very strong leg kick. He's powering down now, he's just coming to the final turn. And this is, you know, it, it, we've talked a lot about the, the, the first day nerves. This would be great for these swimmers to get in, get a taste of, of what the atmosphere is like, what the pool is like, you know, how they are swimming, what kind of shape they're in. And you know, the, always the first swim of the competition is the hardest one. So when, if you get in and you do swim well, it gives you a great confidence for the rest of the week. So Levart and... Who else is going to be in the mix? Sam Richards on the far side is trying to come right back at him. The City of Coventry swimmer in lane number seven is making inroads on the lead of Levant. It's not going to be a very big lead at the end if you need any lead at all. Levant will touch first by about half a body length. As far as the clock is concerned, it was only 0.13 between Levant winning it. Samuel Richards in second and third to Stevenson Ganner in third place. 4.04.53 is the winning time for Levert, and that's a new personal best for him. And uh, some decent times in there, considering their entry times. Another personal best for Suleiman Butt as well. Uh, I think, just get the times yeah, for 04.53, the winning time for Levert, and Richards in second, 4.04.66, and that's a new personal best for him. So a huge PB from Samuel Richards, two and a half seconds. He came back storming down that final 50. Don't know where he came from. He obviously had a, a lot, a lot to give down that final 50, and very, very nearly got the win. On to heat number two of the men's 400 freestyle. Not quite ready to start, so we might just have a chance to show you the start list for this. Athletes, stand down, please. Athletes, can you just stand down for a second? Thank you. Just a little uh, timing delay. So again, Give you the uh, one to eight while we're waiting for this. In the heat number two, Reese Worth of Plymouth will go in one. Archie Mitchell of the City of Sheffield will go in two. Stuart McIntosh, City of Aberdeen in lane three. Four is Carl Chisholm of City of Kirklees. Tom Hatfield, better known as an IM swimmer, doing the 400 freestyle. Thomas Moss of Stockport Metro in six. Thomas Flaherty of City of Milton Keynes in seven, and Sean Musgroft in eight. So there you are, there's confirmation of all the eights that go to start. And one of our Olympians from 2008 in Beijing, Tom Hatfield, going late five. Why is he doing the 400 free then, Ross? Well, he's already been pre-selected for the, for the Welsh team, and I think, you know, he's, he's probably, he wants to swim on day one. Uh, there's probably not a lot out there that he, he can do on day one. And this is the same distance as he's going to be swimming the IM. And it would be interesting to see actually whether Tom dives in and does freestyle or actually does medley, um, because I won't put it past him that he actually dives in and starts doing butterfly. He's not shaved, as you can see there. Uh, he's, he won't probably have been rested. He's already been pre-selected. So this is, he's probably just going to test himself over 400 meters, um, over 
four minutes is what's the, the event that he does. So it's, you know, it's replicating the distance and then the time that he wants to do in, in the Commonwealth Games. So you're saying he could do a 400 IM here because it is freestyle. So he, can, he obviously can swim any stroke he wants. Technically, he could actually get in and, and swim 400 metres IM. Um, I, I don't think he will, but you know, Tom's, uh, you know, Tom's one of those characters that you certainly wouldn't put it past him uh, to do that. But I do think he's probably, you know, he wants to probably focus on his freestyle leg of the, the medley. So what better way of doing it than actually doing a 400 metres freestyle? I think that hopefully we are not too far away from rectifying the problem, whatever it is. I think it's concerning that time device there's Tom very disappointed was he to miss out on the 2012 Olympics in London it's such a stacked event the 400 am and uh, I think he finished fourth didn't he yeah you know it's uh, it's such a competitive event here in Britain and uh, yeah he just missed out he, he swam well but he, he missed out um, so this is his chance to, to kind of show that he is back on the international stage at the Commonwealth Games he will be representing Wales and just to show that you know he's not done yet you know, he's, he's ready to go and he's ready to go for at least the Commonwealth Games and, and if not for another couple of years to, into Rio. Well, we have quite a few swimmers in this race who have entry times of 4.03. So uh, if that is replicated in the pool right now, Tom Moss, Tom Hatfield, Carl Chisholm and Stuart McIntosh should all be fairly close when it comes to the end of the race. Eight lengths of this Glasgow pool. Bit of cat and mouse here to see whether somebody wants to take it out fast at the beginning. Remember, only the top eight times will qualify for the final tonight. There's no uh, playing possum in this one. You really have to go for it because it gets uh, quite stacked. As I said, there are six heats, and when we get to heats five and six, there's some very good quality swimmers to come yet in this event. Yeah, I think these, certainly the swimmers aiming to, to make the final will be looking around about the 3.53 mark. So that's the time that I certainly would expect you'd need to go this morning to, to make the final later on this afternoon. But these swimmers, they are around 4.03, 4.05, but I certainly would expect some of them to be knocking on the door of four minutes. Well, let's see if anybody can break that four-minute barrier here. I should say there's quite a few who are in and around that time. Uh, because they have to kind of go for broke this morning. Many will be hoping for size and wall PBs. Say in uh, Tom Hatfield's case, he doesn't do the 400 freestyle all that often. So he'll be hoping to maybe make a, a size and wall chunk and improvement on his side. But it is lane six, Tom Moss, who is setting the pace at 150. Or is it uh, the outside smoker? Very close to it. Uh, Reese Worth is doing all right in lane number one as well. But it is Tom Moss who leads from Stuart McIntosh in second, and Reese Worth. But uh, one, two, and three are separated by only half a second. Yeah, that's right. I'm really interested to see how Stockport Metro do. You've already mentioned it already this morning that you know, certainly some of the, the biggest swimmers that they've had over the last, well, 10, 10 12 years have, have now gone. And it's the new group that are coming through. Still the same Sean Kelly there, the same coach that's, that's produced you know, medalist after medalist at the Olympic Games. Now he's got a new crop of youngsters to work with. And it'll be interesting to see how they perform here in Glasgow and over the next couple of years. Extra time for Tom Moss is 4.03.72 and he obviously is looking to deliver something a bit more impressive and a bit speedier than that in the heats this morning and he is dominating this race. He won't be aware of course of uh, Reese Worth closest to us in lane one who is uh, still up at the pace and also making his way through in lane number four is Carl Chisholm waiting for Tom Hatfield to start to make his breakthrough perhaps it's going to happen now in the second half of the race it is Moss from Reese Worth in second place third is Carl Chisholm and Hatfield now in fourth turn time for Tom Moss 227.80 at uh, 250. A very, very strong swim from Thomas Moss out in lane number six. He's coming into the final 100 metres and he's just extending that lead. He's got a real strong leg kick. This is exactly the kind of swimmer he wants to post. And the time at the minute, you know, he's knocking around the, the 60 points per 100. And if he does another 60 point, he'll be well under the four minute barrier mark. And that'll be a huge PB. Thomas Moss but he just needs to keep this going over the last 75 meters well to be honest he's not being challenged at the moment so he has had to swim his own race 
The uh, nearest challenger to him has been the man in lane one, but Reese Worth is looking a little bit ragged now in lane number one. So it's going to come down to these top four Metro swimmer in lane number six to finish things off. And he's going to finish it off hopefully in style with his first ever sub four minute swim. 3.28.80 at that turn. He has a lead of over four seconds over Tom Hatfield has moved into second. And Reese Worth is still hanging on, but he's back in third now. Yeah, cracking swim from Tom Moss. He's going to go way under the four minute barrier mark. Fantastic swim. Looks like it is Tom Hatfield that's battling it out for second, third, and fourth. Incredibly tight, but who's going to get those minor places? But no doubt who the winner is. It is going to be Tom Moss. And a new personal best, a new sub four minute swim for him. 358 14. Sold more Metro fans and their uh, supporters of uh, the team in the pool are delighted with that. And so too will be Tom Moss. 358 14. Second, Tom Hatfield, 4.03.01 for him. And uh, that is in around his uh, personal best time. In fact, I think it is a personal best time for him in the 400 freestyle. And third place going to Stuart McIntosh. So well done. First sub four minute swim of the morning from Tom Moss, 3.58.14. And Tom Hatfield in second, Reese Worth in third. This year, one to eight for the next heat of the 400 freestyle. Fastest in the pool. Terms of entry time. Again, none of these previously have done a sub four minute swim. So we're expecting a few here because there's quite a few on the cusp. Cameron Smith of Edinburgh University is uh, only just missed out on that four minute barrier, as is Thomas Howley, uh, Julian Chan, Kui Lin. 401.29, so there's uh, three swimmers in three, four, and five who uh, have come very, very close to breaking the four-minute barrier before today. Just have a look at the outside swimmer. Michael Gunning's got off, as his name might suggest, gunning for victory here. 27.03, that's a very rapid first 50. I wonder if he's going for a split time here. Yeah, well, he's, he's actually the, the training partner of Thomas Moss, that was the winner from the last heat. So, you know, if he's been doing any of the training like Thomas Moss has, and he would have seen his training partner just go and smoke a, a 3.58, he probably thinks he can do the same, and uh, he's certainly going out for it. And it, there is a great feel about Stockport at the minute. They, they are uh, a real tight group, and these lads are, are only just 20. Um, so they, they are a young group that's coming through, and, and this is a fantastic opening 100 metres from Michael Gunning, 56.41, and he is uh, around about 0.8 ahead of the second place. He's got a really nice stroke as well, isn't he? Nice, nice body position in there. Uh, not a great deal of effort, just the right amount of effort. It's nice and high on the water. All the things that Sean Kelly would have drilled into him, talked to him time and time again during training sessions, it's what you need to do. And he's uh, pretty much enacting it here in a, in a very important situation for him. Yeah, he does have great technique, but he also has a great start and great turns, which is becoming more and more important in swimming. And uh, yes, it is a 400 metres, but they seem to be extending the underwater phase a lot more. And Michael Gonin is, you know, he's certainly showing that he went 15 metres off the start, and he seems to be going around about seven, eight metres off each turn, which is, a, you know, if you can do that in a 400 metres freestyle, that is you know, certainly can play in your advantage so much. 4.03.50 is his entry time. Well, if he goes at this kind of pace now, he's going to smash that to smithereens. 1.55.32 at the halfway stage. That's ridiculous. Uh, is, he, is he kidding us with that entry time? Going to 4.03. Yeah, this is going to be massively inside. Look at the gap. If we, if we can just bring that shot out a bit. Just look at the, the gap there between the far side, lane eight, and everybody else. He must be leading by five, six, seven meters at that turn. Look at the gap on the clock. It's going to be 225 compared to 5.18 seconds between first and second. That's ridiculous. It, well, yeah, it is ridiculous, and he is, he is you know, he's the slowest swimmer in this race, apparently. Um, yeah, he's five seconds quicker. But what I was going to say to you, just before you started there, Bobby, let's wait and see how he goes down this next 100 metres. But he's flew down the next 100 metres. Uh, this is a cracking swim. He's got 100 metres now to go. To keep this together, he's got it. Oh, his turns are still, get, still good. And he's just gone uh, around about one, one, and, 1 minute and 50. So if he does a, another sub 60 seconds, uh, he's going to be knocking on the door of one or 3.55, which will be a fantastic swim. I, I don't think he's easing up at all. I don't think there's any signs of him actually getting tired, 
any in any way, shape, or form. He's just looking really, really strong. This is a massively impressive swim here by the top four metro. So Michael Gunning, who is going to be going a long way inside four minutes if he keeps this up, and there's no indication here, Ross, that he's going to stop or uh, or fail to do that. No, he does look like he's hurting a little bit now. He's coming to the final 25 meters. Sean Kelly's waving him on. It's a commanding swim. It's a fantastic swim. Let's just see how far under the four minutes he is actually going. This is a huge swim. It's an entry time of 4.03.5. That's going to go. 3.56.65. That's how much has gone by. A massive, massive chunk. He's taken off his personal best. Tom Howley in second place. Third, Matthew Brecken. And fourth, Julian Lin. The gap in the end between first and second place was enormous. It was really huge. It turned out to be six seconds very nearly. Yeah, it was just a commanding swim from pretty much the first 50 to, to touching the wall. It was a great swim. And it, we mentioned earlier, he would have sat behind the block, seeing his teammate Tom Moss absolutely destroy the first heat, and he's gone and done exactly the same. Have we got any stop port swimmers in the, in the next heat? <laughs> it could be stop port week in Glasgow, the way things are looking. Here comes the next heat. And indeed we do. We have uh, Grant Quigley going lane one. So perhaps as we heard lane eight, we're <laughs> in lane one this time. Oliver Tennant of Swansea in two. Three, Chris Suggett of Swansea. Another Swansea swimmer in four is Daniel Jervis. Martin Walton of Hatfield in five. Martin Kremen, who just missed out on the 1500 time for Scotland last week, is in lane six. Benjamin Carey of City of Salford in seven. And Cameron Brown of City of Newport in lane eight. So going Grant Quigley. Yeah, he's second at the first 50 <laughs> turn. Uh, Daniel uh, Jervis leading uh, just at 27.06. Surely can't happen again, can it? Uh, another another Stockport win. Um, but, you know, we've mentioned it again and again and again. There is a great feel around Stockport. And if these lads are such a tight, uh, you know, they're so tightly competitive against each other, they're not going to want to see any of them uh, beating their time. So he will be going out, uh, Grant Quigley, to try and beat his teammates as of the rest of the field. But he, uh, he is turning actually fourth in that event. And this is obviously a lot harder and a lot faster uh, heat than the last previous two. Well, we'll see. Hardly anything to separate any of them at the moment. So nobody breaking away like they have done in the previous two races. All eight swimmers are not quite in the line, but certainly it's probably about two metres or not much more between the swimmer at the front of the pack and the swimmer at the back of the pack. This is much more competitive in terms of uh, a race anyway. At the 150 stage, it is just Martin Kremen, 127.76. Join second, Martin Walton and Daniel Jervis and Grant Quigley. We'll be keeping an eye on for another Stockport victory, possibly. He is in lane one and he is in fourth place at that turn. So in the previous heat, Michael Gunning turned in 155.32, and he did die off a little bit over the last 200 metres. These guys are not going to be turning in that, but probably expect them to come back a little bit quicker. Four of them in the line going to the wall, and Kremen just holding on from Grant Quigley. He's moved up into second place. Martin Walton is in third, and Chris Suggett is in fourth place. Martin Kremen, better known for the longer distance swims, uh, better known as a 1500 swimmer but uh, having a good crack here at the 400. See what kind of time he can post. His entry time, by the way, for Martin is 3.58.16. Yeah, so they're three seconds behind Michael Gunning's time at the 200-metre mark, but I expect them not to be too far away from his overall time of 3.56.65. So these, these swimmers will probably have a, a lot more endurance than Michael Gunning. He did go out very, very quick. Uh, and, you know, if he gets the chance to do that again, he probably will pace it a little bit different and they'll probably be a bit faster over the last 200 metres. Um, but these guys, you know, they don't really seem to be to move, moving up too much and they do seem to be all in the line. Top six were separated by 0.4 of a second at the last turn. Let's see how much that's changed on this one. Not a great deal, I don't think. Chris Suggett, 258.78 at the turn. Martin Walton in second. Third is Daniel Jervis, and fourth now is Benjamin Kerry. But very little time-wise, and very little visibly from uh, distance-wise, between the man in first place and the man in last place. And Martin Walton is trying to break the field open, but unsuccessful at this stage. It is, and there's probably four or five guys still in the line coming into the final turn. It's going to be to see who's got 
that bit between the teeth that they can finish off this race. The minute they are you know, so far down on, on Michael Gunn's time, I don't think they're actually going to beat his time, so he's going to be fastest qualifier still after the first four heats. Pink cap of Marty Walton trying to stop all colours, including Daniel Jervis to his left-hand side. But Jervis has got the best finish here and starting to work his way past Martin Walton. Last few metres, this will be all about Daniel Jervis and all about the time that he can possibly post. He will go sub four, 3.57.13. Second, Martin Walton, 3.57.88. And third is Chris Suggett. So we have, in the end, six swimmers who went sub four minutes, there, including Martin Kremen in six at 3.59.85. So you can see him coming into the final to the uh, final finish. Sorry, head down, and you know, still looking at that time from from Michael Gunn. It's not going to be a million miles away from from making the final. There is some quick boys to come, and uh, still two heats to to come as well. But uh, it's not going to be a million miles away. So on to the penultimate heat, and uh, there'll be some names you'll recognise here, including. The man who finished fifth at the World Championships last year in Barcelona. James Guy goes in lane number four. Nick Granger of City of Sheffield was in fantastic form, I was told by his coach Ross Barber a few weeks ago, and now it's hurt his back. So it's a question whether Nick Granger can overcome his back problem or not and go for it. He's a kind of swimmer I think probably will go for it, whatever. But uh, apparently he was posting some amazing times in training about five weeks ago. And he and uh, Nick Granger side by side will certainly spur each other on Max Litchfield, who's moved from Doncaster to Sheffield in the uh, last year or so, is also in this mix. And Yain Loy, you mustn't forget, although he is eighth place at the first 50 split, don't read too much into that because he will come strong at the end. And Jack Bunnell in lane one, lots of promise and lots of uh, very good swimmers. Tom Allen, we shouldn't forget, who was uh, one of our World Championship swimmers over 1,500 uh, not so long ago. He's going in lane number eight. Yeah, it's a pretty stacked heat, you've got to be honest. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned Max, Max Litchfield has moved to City of Sheffield now, more of a, a medley swimmer, so he's trying his hand at the 400 metres freestyle as well. But it is, uh, it is lanes four and five that are battling it out over the first opening 100 metres. James Guy turning first in 54.21 and Nick Granger second in 54.32. So nothing separating the first two at the opening 100. James Guy is ranked sixth in the world at the moment, 3.47.75. That's the time he did in Marseille at their open meeting. So he'll be looking to improve upon that if he possibly can. 1.23.21 at the turn. Nick Granger is about a quarter of a second behind him. And in third place, it is Jay Lelliot of Bath University. I want to see what... Uh, Nick can do at the back end of the race. Uh, he's still very much a, not an untried and untested swimmer because he came to the fall last year, but uh, still, I think there's a bit of work to be done with him. And uh, the sky's the limit for him, I'm told by his coach. Certainly is for James Guy. James Guy just goes in and gives it a rip every time he swims. Yeah, and James Guy, he looks so comfortable at the minute. It just doesn't even look like he's you know, moving out of second gear. He is a, a talented athlete and, and one that, you know, he's got a huge future in the sport for, for many years to come. But so has is Nick Granger and also uh, in, in lane number seven, he's having a fantastic opening 200 metres. These guys, the first three are separated by 0.7 of a second. So uh, even though James Guy looks like he's, he's cruising, he's actually extending his lead. There's nothing separating the first three swimmers at the opening 200 metres. Now I should mention that Jay Lelliot is one of the Bath University swimmers, 19 years of age. His entry time is 3.54.59. Well, he's going to go a long way inside that if he keeps going at this kind of pace. If he's keeping pace with James Guy, we know he's going to be in around the 350s or possibly below. But uh, Guy looking very smooth and very controlled, not seemingly exerting himself too much. Uh, probably not expecting the challenge to come from the man in lane seven, however. No, and this is a fantastic swim from Jay Lelelit from University of Bath. He's turned in 2.51.76, and let's have a look at his entry time of 3.54. He's going to smash that. He's going to absolutely smash it. You know, he's going to go under, if he carries this guy, uh, under uh, 3.50, and James Guy is turned in 2.50.8, and he looks so, so easy. So easy. Well, they're doing some good work down in Bath with Dave and Graham and uh, the boys. And uh, it's uh, proving to be Jane Lilliot is uh, giving James Guy a bit of a resource. So I'm not sure that James Guy's fully aware because he'll be expecting uh, Nick Granger to be his main challenger alongside him. Look at a man with the 354 entry time. It's probably not too concerned with Jane Lilliot. Well, he will be now. He certainly will be now. He's not going to be too far off him at all. And 
even though James Guy looks like he is just stroking this out now in terms of the last five metres, he's not going to win this heat. It is going to be the guy from University of Bath. 350.36, a huge PB and a fantastic swim, and he punches the water, and rightly so. Fastest time of the morning, 3.50.36 for the bar swimmer, Jay Lelliot. Massive personal best, James Guy, 3.50.76. Nick Granger probably done enough with 3.51.37. Max Litchfield in fourth place, 3.51.96. And Jan Lloyd, a disappointing 3.55.34 from him. Probably expect the, the first of those four guys to make the, the finals night. You mentioned Jan Lloyd, he isn't shaved, he isn't rested a little bit like Tom Hatfield. He's already pre-qualified for the Welsh team. He's going to get some race experience here in Glasgow. Last heat of the men's 400 metres freestyle. Caleb Hughes had a bit of a breakthrough early on in 2013. Let's see what he can achieve here. Gareth Mills is in two for City of Sheffield. Then Stephen Milne of Perth City in three. Dan Fogg of Loughborough, probably been known for his 1500 and open water swimming. Matt Johnson has moved from Sheffield down to Bath in five. Tom Santa very much in Sheffield, still in six. James Gibson, I will say at this point, no, not that one, in late server from Stockport Metro. And Alex Dunk of Prescott. Now, this is an intriguing one because there are a lot of people who are probably better known for other events like Matt Johnson and like Dan Fogg, but uh, are pretty good at the 400 free as well. Yeah, this is a big mix here in, in this uh, in this final 400 meters freestyle. Dan Fogg, as you mentioned, you know, 10k swimmer, 1500 swimmer, 400 swimmer. Um, Matthew Johnson, a medley swimmer. You know, Kayla Hube, also an open water swimmer, but can do a very good 400. So it'll be interesting. This this will probably be a, certainly a slower 200 meters, open 200 meters, but a fast closing 200 meters because they've all got that endurance behind them through the open water or the 1500. Well, this could change hands, the lead in this race, several times during the course. So don't uh, imagine that when we get to 150, the lead is necessarily going to go all the way through to the end. Because we have about four, five, six in a line. Six in a line here. Uh, the leader is Tom Sunter of Sheffield. Alex Dunk is second. Matt Johnson of Bath in third place. And fourth, Stephen Milne. And we're waiting for Dan Fogg to make his move. That will probably come, as you mentioned, Ross, towards the tail end of this race. Because at the moment, he is not in the uh, front four but we have pretty much five or six in the line here and at the 200 stage it's going to be quite hard to separate them yeah can't really separate it looks like it potentially could be Matt Johnson from the University of Bath uh, but as you know as you mentioned they're they're separated by less than you know less than less than a second the first six swimmers or less than half a second should I say 0.38 between the top six. That's how tight. Look, one, two, three, four. The only person who's really been dropped so far is James Gibson in seven. All the other seven swimmers are pretty much in contention. Probably Caleb Hughes as well in one out of the picture now. But uh, eight, six, five, four, three, two. And I'm going to take off at this point uh, <laughs> in consideration here. Gareth Mills, 224.04 the turn. Alex Dunk in second place. Tom Sunter in third. And Dan Fogg just biding his time in fourth place, but I expect him, he's got to make his move soon, it's sure it's going to come now. Yeah, actually Gareth, Gareth Mills from City of Sheffield looked like he made his move down that third 100, and he's now opened a, a sizable, sizable gap over the rest of the field, and it is Daniel Fogg is always trying to close that gap on him, but he is some two seconds behind, just under two seconds behind Gareth Mills, a cracking third 100 metres. Entry time for Gareth is 3.53, so again we're looking at somebody who's going to do a sizable personal best. Also looking at Tom Sunter, who's aware that his Sheffield teammates leading away and doesn't want to miss out on the action here. So it's a Sheffield 1-2 at the moment in lanes number two and six with 50 to go. Is Gareth Mills from Tom Sunter with Daniel Fogg moving up. Uh, Almost onto his shoulder, but not quite there yet. Matt Johnson in fourth, and fifth is Stephen Mill. Now, of course, it's a question of what kind of time we're going to see from Gareth Mills here. I think Gareth Mills is going to actually probably post the fastest time of the morning. If he can just finish this off, it looks like he's getting tired. And this last 10 metres to go, he's starting to go low in the water. 
It's going to get there just, I think, 3.51 maybe. 3.51.28 is the winning time for Gareth. Second place to Tom Sunter, 3.51.72. And that's two personal bests for the two Sheffield swimmers. Third is Dan Fogg, 3.51.81. He's been quicker than that. And fourth, Matt Johnson. So Sheffield 1-2. And uh, we've now got to wait and see whether all those uh, three top Sheffield swimmers make it through to the final. A oh, cracking swim. And just as we're talking about Stockport, City of Sheffield would have come and done exactly the same later on in, in the business end of the heats. Uh, three cracking swims from, from the, the swimmers. Ma Thomas Sunter um, and also Nick Granger in the heat before and, and Gareth Mills, you know, all around 350 or 351. So that's great that they, they are doing that times and absolutely fantastic. Now, there's so many things that I want to talk about there, carry on, because that, that was an amazing event, wasn't it? We were talking about Stockport Metro first off. Before we go on to talk about Sheffield, Stockport Metro, we saw Michael Gunning there have a great swim, didn't we? Yeah, Michael, uh, he's just moved to Stockport and he just took seven seconds off of his entry time. He was in lane eight as well, so it was Which a really is always tough. difficult, lane yeah, eight, really tough outside wonder, for him. Yeah. And yeah, I think he'll be so pleased. He's one of the nicest kids I think I've ever met in my whole life. So I'm really pleased to swim well. And I'm sure he'll be like, like to hear about that <laughs> as well. Cause like we say, you know, great swim, great finishes there from him as well. So Stockport Metro are maybe the uh, the underdogs here coming up for, for great performances so far. Well, the thing with Stockport is that we've, well, Stockport all, have always had a really rich history. Yeah. Four Olympic medals in one club. Sean Kelly's a great coach. So he's always going to be there and he's always going to have great swimmers. Mm -hmm. And City of Sheffield, we saw uh, great swimmers there from Gareth Miller and Thomas Sunter as well. Yeah. It's tough, isn't it? It's really nice to see Tom swimming well. Um, I think he's had a couple of years where he's not performed as well as he'd hoped, so really good for him to come here, have a great heat swim, and then it'll all be about that final tonight. But I'm pretty sure that, that James Guy um, from Millfield, he was having a bit of a rest then. I, I saw his last turn, he triple breathed, which is something that he's going to have to work on tonight and make sure he doesn't do that in the final. Because <laughs> they were all fighting for that place, weren't they? Yeah. It was, it was pretty impressive <laughs> for us to watch anyway. So now we move on to the women's 200 metres freestyle. And heat number one, we have seven swimmers starting, and there they are. Courtney Price, Bethany Newton, Catherine Stark, Amelia Stevenson, Lucy Oxprow, Katie Reynolds and Constance Dean, representing Royal Wolverhampton, Taunton Dean, Warren de Baths, Bridge End City, Team Ipswich, Burnley, and Maidenhead. So, four lengths of this Glasgow pool. 200 freestyle. Again, we're talking about events that have been pretty good for Great Britain. We're talking a year, of course, where it's England, Scotland, and Wales who are competing mainly, but it's been an event that's been pretty good for Great Britain over the years, like Silver. Uh, Joe Jackson, of course, uh, Rebecca Anderson, probably been known for a 400 and 800, but the uh, women's freestyle has been uh, a success story for Great Britain over the last decade or so. Let's see which of the new breed can come through. At the first turn is Constance Dean, our maidenhead, who leads her split time at 50 is 29.19. Yeah, interesting comment just made notoriously very very strong in the 200 meters freestyle for, for women you go back to, to the likes of melanie marshall who's now a coach at city of derby was ranked number one in the world in 2004 and then you have the likes of joe jackson and rebecca adlington caitlin mccatchy you know, real strong swimmers um, and now it seems to be changing a little bit that a couple of those swimmers have re retired now and the likes of um, siobhan marie o'connor is actually fastest qualifier for this morning at heats. So it'll be interesting to see how the, the new breed do. Jazz Carlin is, is still there, um, and she's incredibly quick, as is Hannah Miley. So she's doing this event, but she's only ranked number eight. So she's gonna have it all on to make the final tonight. There was a time not so long ago where if we saw a swimmer go sub two minutes in this event, we get quite excited. Now you look at the fastest time in the world, Sarah Showstrom at 155.50. This event has moved on massively in the last 10 years. It certainly has. Now, I remember Melanie Marshall going 157 and that was groundbreaking at, at the time. And now that is you know, ranking you probably somewhere around eighth, ninth, tenth in the world. Um, and, and certainly Jazz Carlin has been that time now and you know not a lot was spoke about it so the event has moved on the last 10 years and we need to see now the next wave of british swimmers moving on with it 
So we've reached the end of the first heat. Catherine Stark and Warren DeBars, 205.67. Emilia Stevenson, 206.23. And in third place, Catherine Stark, 205.67. So Courtney Price's previous best time was uh, 207. So she hasn't quite done that, but she has won the first of the heats in 205.67. On to heat number two, we have in total eight heats of the women's 200. And uh, you might recognize that surname in lane one. That is the daughter of Andy Jameson. Maisie Jameson goes in lane one. Isabel Thwaite in two. Georgia Darwin in three for City Newcastle. We're all, by the way, represented by Isabel Thwaite. Sedgefield, Hannah Featherston, Catherine Greenslade are Preston. City of Sheffield's Darcy Deacon in six. Abby Wood of Devencho in seven. And Sophie Hall in eight. Yes, Mesa Jameson is the daughter of our bronze medalist in the 100 butterfly, 200 butterfly, I can't remember which one it was now, from uh, from 88. But uh, Andy Jameson, our uh, Olympic bronze medalist from Seoul. I don't tend to remember that race, as I was only four, but no doubt you remember it, Bob, Just, very, very yeah. clearly. Was you commentating on that race? No, I, I, I think I was still in Pampers at that time. Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> uh, interesting, Abby Wood in lane seven, already done the 400 metres medley this morning, now back into the pool to do a 200 metres freestyle, so the PB in the 400 metres medley. Uh, so a tough swimmer and another tough event for her. But it is at the minute, it is lane number five, Catherine Greenshade from Preston, turning first in one minute, point five nine. Fastest Brit in the world at the moment is Jazz Carlin, set in Marseille, 157.65. We're looking for quite a few swimmers to get in around that time, if not quicker, here later on today. Remember, the 200s go straight to final, so we'll have the heats this morning. Top eight will go through to the final later on today, so it's a... A very difficult qualification. All in the 200s, you get a semi-final and a final, but these girls will be aware that it's going to be a top eight finish for them in terms of time. Darcy Deakin then leading at 150. Last 50 coming up for her. Catherine Grinslade in second, and third is Hannah Featherstone. Another close race. I think that's what, what happens when you don't have a semi-final. It makes things so much more tougher in the morning, and, and these swimmers have to produce personal best to get into those or certainly move up the rankings and it is at the minute lanes number five and six going head to head in the final five meters Catherine Greenslade is just going to get there for first place 204 92 is her time that's faster the morning so far Darcy Deacon of City of Sheffield 205 18 it's a new personal best for her third place is Hannah Featherston and fourth place going to Checking on the board, Abby Wood. There you go, Catherine Greenslade, 204.92 is the winning time. On to heat number three of oh, the women's 200 metres freestyle. Alicia McCrory of Derwentside in one, Jessica Christie of South Aberdeenshire in two, Neem McDonald, uh, McDonald rather, of uh, Loughborough in three, Hugh Wilson Thomas of Loughborough in four, Brianna Close of City of Manchester in five, Holly Hibbert of Southport in six, Lucy Davis of City of Manchester Aquatics in seven, and Chloe Finch of the City of Birmingham in lane eight. Fastest entry time, well, we have two actually on the 203.75. That's, uh, sorry, that's the next one. We have uh, 204s here with uh, Neem McDonough, uh, Wilson Thomas, and also with Holly Hibbert. A brilliant start from Brina Close, using the whole 15 metres underwater. And she turns third at the first 50 metres. Here's Wilson Thomas from Loughborough University, turn first in 28.95. And it's going to be close between these two swimmers as we go into the first 100 metres. Nothing to separate well. Four swimmers pretty much at the halfway stage. Wilson Thomas at uh, 60.17. Brianna Close in second place. Alicia McCrory in the outside lane, lane one in third place. And that's how it looks. But the uh, second hundred is getting tighter and tighter. And more people are coming into the mix. There's about six in the line here. There's probably about half a body length between the swimmer in eight and the one at the back of the pack of that lot. And that's the swimmer in lane number three. Very tight indeed that's been the story this morning 
very close heats. So at that point, your hand on the wall. And the top eight will progress later on, but this is probably fighting out for personal best and winning of the heat. This is Lucy Davis that turned first in 1.33. So she needs to put her head down now in the final 25 metres and head to the wall. Well, we could have two or three different leaders here in the last 15 metres because it is that tight. Uh, everybody trying to jostle for position. Might be Lee McDonough comes through here to take this in lane three, and she's going to just in 204.14 wins that by 0.12 of a second from Lucy Davis in 204.26 and Brianna Close in third 204.43. So we said they're all around the uh, 204 mark, and they pretty much replicated their entry times here. They did, and you know, it's great to see that people are racing tough in the morning. It is great that it's close races because that's when the pressure is on, and that's when you start to make mistakes. And it's the swimmers that don't make the mistakes tend to be the ones that win the races. So it's it's great that we're getting that in Britain now, that we're getting close heats, and hopefully we can progress that into into the final session. Probably any time this week I'll be able to say we have an Olympic champion in the pool. Well, we'll say a few more times, but it's only the one Olympic champion that we have here. And she's in lane number four, going in a rather unfamiliar event. Ruta Militite goes in lane four, a Lithuanian gold medalist, but we claim her because she's from Plymouth. That's where she trains anyway. Aisha Thornton of Loughborough in one. Jyoti Shevaskati of... Plymouth in two, Megan Gilchrist in three, then Ruta in four, Rachel Williams in five, Mari Davis in six for Swim Gwynedd, Laura Quigley of Stockport Metro, we know that uh, she's in decent form, she's going in seven, and Gillian Clark of East Lothian in lane number eight. Interesting to see how Ruta does in the 200 metres freestyle, obviously we know her for 100 metres and 50 metre breaststroke. And she just tends to do the 200 meters every now and again, but 200 freestyles are a new one. She's actually very, very quick at 50 meters freestyle, and it's not surprising when you see her reactions off the block. Her reactions were around about you know, a point one faster than anybody else. Her reaction was 5.8, which is lightning quick, and you can see that as soon as she dives off the block, she's in, she's in first place. Now, it's something that she and her coach jo John Rudd work on very, very long and thoroughly to make sure that she does do that because they realize and appreciate as indeed do we what a difference that start time can make if you win a race by 0.1 of a second that's often where you've made it up from the start now she's in a race though she may not be aware of the fact with Laura Quigley because Lauren Quigley is in seven she is in four and the gap between one and two is negligible it's about uh, three quarters of a second now Lauren Quigley more known for the 200 meters backstroke, so you've got a 100 meter breaststroke and a 200 meter backstroke, 100 meter backstroker fighting out in the 200 meters freestyle. So uh, these these swimmers will be wanting to to get swims under their belts, see how the winter preparations are going, and it looks like they've been going very very well. Well, Ruth has never gone sub two minutes. Oh, she still hasn't. Oh, Ruta, you let me down. I was ready for the, the big payoff there, but until now, but she hasn't done it. 2 0, zero one, one for Ruta Miliatite. Second place, Lauren Quigley, 2 0, zero 92. And third place going to Rachel Williams for the time of 2 oh, two sixty. So we still haven't got a sub two meter, but that is a personal best for Ruta, 2 0, zero one, one. Some three seconds quicker than what she's entered, or three and a half seconds quicker than she's entered Ruta. So she's obviously been working on that endurance. She's going to need for the, the back end of the 100 metres breaststroke. And also Lauren Quigley, another three second PB from, from her, or certainly on her entry time, three seconds quicker. Should mention that Ruta cannot do the final because uh, she's an overseas swimmer. So the overseas swimmers are not being allowed to do the finals here. So that is her swim for today. Georgina Boyle of Chelsea and West has got here. Sounds like a building society in one. Rachel O'Donnell of Carnegie in two. Three, Rachel Louise Masson of South Aberdeenshire. First swimmer is Rebecca Murray in four. Natasha Hofton of Nova Centurion in five. Rebecca Guy of City of Manchester Aquatics in six. Lauren Wilson Walton of uh, Beckenham in seven. And Danielle Stirrett is back from City of Cardiff. She goes in lane number eight. Rebecca Guy turning first, 28.08 at the first 50 in lane number six from the city of Manchester Aquatics. Coached by Mark Rose. And behind her, it is a blanket for pretty much two to seven. There's no doubt who's going to be turning first. It is going to be Rebecca Guy, 59.46. 
I'll tell you that all of the eight swimmers, as far as the entry times are concerned, are separated by about half a second. One to eight in terms of entry times have uh, very little differential between them. But Rebecca Guy is making those stats look quite silly because she was dominating the race, but now coming back into it is Danielle Stewart in lane number eight. She's having a very positive and very powerful third 50 here and might just have got herself into the lead very tight between the two of them she is actually just 0.16 of a second behind Rebecca Guy at the turn we mentioned it in the, in the medley events that the breaststroke is, is the most important the third 100 of, is the, the breaststroke but on the 200 meters freestyle or 200 meter backstroke or whatever it is it's the third 50 that really does break the field so she had a fantastic third 50 moved herself up from fourth to second and now it looks like she is challenging for, for the win Rebecca Guy, I think, is just about going to hold on. There's not going to be much between her and, indeed, the rest of the turn at the final touch. 2.03.82. That's slightly disappointing when you consider what we've just seen in terms of time, but they were all fairly closely grouped, and that's how it's turned out. Daniel Stewart missing out on victory by 0 0.02 of a second in the end. Third place to Rachel O'Doll and Georgina Boyle. for his confirmation for you of the results. Here's the uh, start list for the next heat, which is heat number six of the 200 metres freestyle. Chloe Bean of Bath in one, Alice Jackson of St. Felix School in two, Grace Vertigans of Plymouth in three, Ellie Faulkner in four, one of our Olympians going in lane number four for City of Sheffield, Sophie Smith who again is uh, better known for other events, goes in five. Lizzie Simmons, better known for other events, goes in six from Bath University. Uh, seven is Eleanor Jones of Swansea and eight Grace Tess. What is it about this event? We're seeing loads of people doing events. It's, it's almost like a kind of um, school sports day here. I think I'll have a go at doing that. Why not? <laughs> Well, I, th I think mainly it's because it's the opening day of the championships and, and they want to get a swim under the belt. And other than doing the 400 medley, which is probably one of the hardest events on the programme, the freestyle one is, you know, it's, it's a good one to get into. And certainly the likes of Elizabeth Simmons, she will be wanting to qualify or be certainly selected on the 200 metres backstroke. So doing a 200 metre event will suit her very well. Sophie Smith, she is actually, you know, very good freestyle as well as a medley swimmer so these these girls are using it to, to get into the meet to blow those cobwebs away and uh, you know, that's what we've exactly we've seen we've seen lauren quigley in a couple of heats earlier doing exactly the same we have two swimmers who have done sub two minute times they are in lanes four and five ellie faulkner and sophie smith and they were both in the mix at the 100 split grace Burskins though from plymouth was leading Ellie Faulkner in second, Sophie Smith in third. Now, will that change on, uh, as Ross was mentioning, the third length, which this is? Will things change radically and drastically here? They have, because Ellie Faulkner has taken over the lead from Grace Bertigans in second, Lizzie Simmons in third. Let's see whether Ellie can back up on the last 50 with a decent swim. Remember, she's got to go for a top eight place here, so she can't hang around. No, she certainly can't hang around. She's going to be looking to, to go under two minutes this morning. She's got an entry time of 1.58.42. And she is really powered down this last 100 metres and certainly the last 50 metres. And is going to win this heat very comfortably in a time of 1.59.44. So the first time we've seen anybody go under, underneath two minutes this morning. Elizabeth, second, Elizabeth Simmons in second in 201.66. Just outside her personal best, and third place going to Grace Vertigans, who set the pace on the first 50. 201.86 from her. Sophie Smith, uh, fair way down the field there, 203.08 in sixth. So Lauren Quigley's time from heat number four is still the second fastest. Two more heats to come. Now I'm told, as we see our one to eight for this heat, that Rebecca Turner has been putting in some very good performances in training. Now, can she back it up here? Caitlin McClatchy, of course, great established former Commonwealth gold medalist, of course, from, uh, from Melbourne in 2006. 
and uh, was the uh, British record holder for quite some time as well in this event. She goes in lane number four. Becky Turner goes in five for City of Sheffield. Shauna Lee of Plymouth in six. Emma Saunders seven. City of Manchester. Maya Westlake of City of Sheffield in eight. And the other one to, to make... Oh, Hannah Meyer is in here. Overlook Hannah. She's going in lane number three for Gary. And Jess Lloyd from Manchester in two. And Lucy Hope of the best club in one. This is quite an intriguing one here, but Becky Turner is setting the pace after the first 50. Yeah, you probably would expect that. Also, Caitlin McCarthy well in there in the mix, now swimming for Edinburgh University, spent a lot of time in Loughborough University. And she's from in the, the Scottish Championships last week and narrowly missed selection for the Scottish team. So they have plenty of opportunities to, to qualify for the Commonwealth Games and this is another opportunity. So Caitlin will want to be putting in a, a strong performance here in the 200 metres freestyle to get her onto that team. As you mentioned, eight years ago, she won this event um, back in Melbourne 2006. And uh, very keen on making the team for 2014 as well. And at the moment, it's just about dominating this race from Becky Turner as they go into the last 50 turn. Caitlin McClatchy will just be edged out by Becky Turner by half a second between her and Caitlin McClatchy. Third place, Shauna Lee. And fourth is Hannah Miley now. Rebecca Turner's entry time on this event is one. 58, 88, is that right? Am I reading that right? Yeah, yeah that's right. No, 158, 88, but um, she's not going to win this one because Kayla McClatchy has found something over the final 50 and is just about going to get to the wall before the Sheffield Tour. 159, 24 is Becky Turner's time. OK, well, Becky Turner did get the touch. Kayla McClatchy, 159, 58, and Shauna Lee in third place. Hannah Miley, 201. 47 is the time, so that uh, sub two minute swim for both Caitlin and Becky Turner should uh, easily progress them to the final later today. Yeah, that's right. That was the fastest swim of the morning from Rebecca Turner, 159 to 8. Just edging out her teammate from City of Sheffield, Ellie Fort, into second place, 159 44. And Caitlin McCatchin now is third with one heat to go. Vicky, though, one well, of the fastest Brits in the world this year. Siobhan Marie O'Connor goes in there. She goes in lane number four. Harry Cooper in one for City of Derby. Alexandra Hooper of Shrewsbury in three. Amelia Morn now of Aquasulis in three. Mentioned uh, Siobhan, we have the Welsh record holder Jazz Carling going in five. Lily Mitchell of Swansea in six. Sean Morgan of Edinburgh in seven. And Hayley Monteith in lane This should be a really good race here. We have some good racers and uh, they know they're going to head around that 159 time. They're into the final. 26.92 for the opening 50 of the women's 200 meter freestyle is rapid. Siobhan Maria O'Connor has already destroyed the field by a good three, four meters. I've only had 75 meters gone. 158.05, she did at the Flanders Cup, her fastest time of the year. Well, if she goes like this, she keeps going like <laughs> this, she's gonna beat that by some considerable she's, distance. She's absolutely flying. 156.49, so it's just gonna around about 29 seconds and she already is has won this race in the opening 100 meters this is absolutely outstanding well we did say when she came to the four in shanghai at the world championships in 2011 that she is a star of the future she got to the semi-finals there she probably went above and beyond what she hoped to do uh, didn't maybe have the greatest year in 2012 that she would have wanted uh, backed up with a decent year in 2013, but I think 2014 could be her year. Everybody's getting very excited at the prospect. 126.75 at the turn. She is leading Jazz Carlin by two seconds. Yeah, she's got about a 30 point. So she has another 30 point. That's a 156. And if she goes 156, that's going to put her in the top whoa, four or five in the, in, in the world this year. Um, and she doesn't like she's slowing. This is an incredible swim from Siobhan Marie O'Connor for a heat. And she's just showing what she is capable of. of Jazz Carlin is no slow swimmer and she's two metres behind. 
157.23 is the fifth fastest time in the world in 2014. 157.23, Siobhan Marie O'Connor, Sarah Showstrom, Emma McKeown, Bronte Barrett, Femke Hemskirk, and Karen Prinsloo are the only swimmers who have gone faster. In fact, Karen Prinsloo has just been overtaken by that, so just the four swimmers in the world have gone faster than Siobhan and Marie O'Connor. 157.23, Jazz Carlin, not uh, too shabby on either, 158.37, and Libby Mitchell, 159.92 is her time. That's the first time she has ever gone sub two minutes, so that was a cracking, well, let's say race, just cracking times, led by Siobhan Marie O'Connor. Quick word before we go back to the studio about that swim. Just outstanding. Well, absolutely outstanding. Well done, Siobhan Marie O'Connor. Now, well done indeed. Well done indeed for Siobhan Marie O'Connor because that was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Yeah, for her to do a PB at that time, a 157 in the heats of a competition, I think is going to look really good for tonight. <laughs> it's going to look very good for tonight. And that's obviously why you want to stay tuned for all this incredible action because Lauren Quigley also had a, a great swim, didn't she? Yeah, well, the thing about the 200 is that this is a relay qualification event. So you have everybody that wants to be part of a relay. So you have the backstrokers, Lauren Quigley, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Simmons, you know, doing this event to try and make it into the final to be in the top four to make that relay spot. Yeah, and Lauren Quigley, as we can see on the, on the screen, it, it's great to see these ladies really, really going for it because they've got everything to, to sort of lose here, haven't they? Yeah, well, this event, um, it's, it's good in that they're, the top four will predominantly make the team to go for the relay and it's just such a great thing to be part of I know that anytime I'd spoken to Rebecca Adlington or to, to Joe Jackson you know the relay is, is what they absolutely love doing so I think everybody really wants to be part of that team mm -hmm. and they don't want to be making any mistakes do they because they can't afford to do that because we go straight to finals this evening yeah well with only being the final tonight the top eight will make that and I think this morning a lot of people had to swim really fast just to make it through to the final. So preparation moving forward for this evening, what are they going to be doing now, Kerry-Ann? Well, they'll probably all go back. They need to have a swim down because it's such a, um, a, a short event. It's a real sprint, but they need to make sure they get all that lactic acid out of their system. Yeah, absolutely. Now we move on to the S9 men's 100 meter freestyle. Let's give you the running order for this one. Craig Smith, Sean Fraser, Ryan West, Matthew Wiley, Morgan Peters, Joseph Craig and Damien Eng. Going in lane seven, we do have a mix of categories here. S8s in one and two, S9s in three, four and five, and S7s in six and seven. So in lane number six, Joseph Craig, world champion at the Paralympic World Championships last year in both the 100 and the 400. He goes in lane number six. Fastest time, though, in the field. Only one swimmer has actually gone sub one minute in this field. That's Matthew Wiley, who is in lane number four. As I mentioned, they are they are all different categories, but we'll just uh, see what uh, Joseph Craig can do, because he's a great heat swimmer and likes to go for it from the off. It's completely different to what we, we're used to with the disability swimmers. I know I'm in multi-classification, but this is just the fastest swimmers will make it through to the final tonight, and the, the fastest swimmers will then be nominated to go to the Commonwealth Games later on this year. Yeah, the uh, Paralympic qualification for the Commonwealth Games takes place next weekend in this uh, very pool. Looking at the centre lane, see whether Matthew Wiley can break that minute barrier as he has done before the 59.43. Another of the uh, northeast lads. He's from City of Sunderland. Joseph Craig is from South Tyneside. It is going to be lane number four. Touch his first. Well, that's a quick time for Matthew Wiley. 58.95 from him. That's the uh, quickest he's ever been. Ryan West as well. 59.61. First time he's broken the minute barrier. Morgan Peters, 101.02 for him. Slightly slower than he has been before, Joseph Craig in fourth place. And Matthew Wiley, impressive stuff from the uh, man from the city of Sunderland. He's got a big PB there. He certainly has. That's a fantastic swim. Entry time of 59.43, and he actually goes 58.9. So you know, that's exactly what the kind of form you want to be showing. You know, big competition next week for disability swimmers. It's also the, the European qualification next week in this very, very pool. So... He's showing that he's on form, which is uh, fantastic news for him.
Okay, coming up next, it is the women's 50 meters breaststroke. We will have four. It's, we've got to be absolutely honest about this. We have talked about it in the past. At the moment, it's probably a weak area in British swimming. We've got some very strong areas. We talked about it. The, the men's freestyle is looking pretty good now. Um, the women's breaststroke is, is the only thing, as far as the women's events, that really concerns me. We don't have a breakthrough swimmer at any distance. We've seen what Roos has done from Plymouth, but we don't have, a, have an English uh, or a Scottish or a Welsh swimmer who can do that right now. I actually think uh, th this will be the competition for, for a lot of the, uh, certainly the young breaststroke swimmers to come through. We've seen in the last couple of years that you know, there's some 14, 15, 16 year olds that you know, are bubbling under, under the surface. And I think actually now this is the time that, that they're going to show and they're going to actually come through. Um, we're not. We're not anywhere near the, the top of the, of the world in, in terms of the rankings. But we have some talent that are coming through that are young enough that in a couple of years, so, well, you know, looking forward to, to Rio in two years, can actually bridge that gap and also moving on to Tokyo in, in six years' time. So, yes, you, you are right. At the minute, it's not one of our strongest events, but we do have the, the talent that are coming through in that. I think probably what irks me more is that we do have a British-based breaststroker who is about the best in the world, but she's not British. She's Lithuanian, and she's ranked two in this event. That's Ruta Melitite. Heat one. I haven't got a chance to give you all of them because we've only got about uh, 32 seconds. But we'll be concentrating on the fastest, which should be the centre lane. Sophie Wilson of Loughborough in four. Nicola Ribeiro of Burris Stockton in five. And Megan Morrison in six. All the times around the 33 second mark. Who's going to break through and get into the 32s? Well, it's going to be difficult to call because all, all eight are pretty much in the line at 25. We do call this the splash and dash, but if you rush your stroke too much, you will be slipping the water. So you need to be connected with the water. Very, very important to have a good start. And it does look like he's going to be lane two and lane four that are going to head to the wall, but it's going to be lane two. It is Black from City of Leeds that win the first opening heat on 33.18. Layla, you got me on my knees. 33.18 <laughs> for our winner. Sophie Wilson, 33.22. And Megan Lee in third place with Evangelina Fisher in fourth. So 33.18 for Layla. It's her fastest time by half a second. There you are. That's how closely grouped they were. Top four separated by 0.63 of a second lane of black, 33.18. Heat number two of the women's 50 metres breaststroke. Catherine Johnson of Edinburgh University will be uh, hoping to head the field. She's one of the class acts in this one to eight. Yeah, she certainly is a little bit older than the rest of the field. Which has the experience of already representing Scotland at the Commonwealth Games in Delhi. And she looks like she's just probably slightly behind actually from lane five, who is Sarah Vasey from Deventio XL. And it does look like it's going to be Sarah that's going to touch the wall first. And she does in 31.87. Half a second PB for, as you believe, the entry time. 31.87 for Sarah Vasey. Catherine Johnson in second place with 32.25. Andrea Strachan, 32.66. And 32.77 for Rebecca Swales. It's got one more heat before we see the, the world record holder and Olympic champion on the 100 metres breaststroke, Ruta Melitati. And just, just want you to, to watch her reaction on the, on the start. She'll be quicker than anybody else. Um, and it, it, really does separate, you know, you can separate from winning and, and coming forth. Well, look at that start time when it happens, the reaction time in the next heats. They're all pretty much the same here, hardly any differential between any of them. But Molly Renshaw, better known for the 200, goes in lane number six for Loughborough here. Now, what's her speed work like? Well, she's been working that. She has moved to Loughborough University from Deventio XLs, and she has been doing a lot of gym work. But Sophie Taylor is one of the swimmers that, you know, I, I expect this week to, to be her breakthrough competition. And she is absolutely flying down on the 50 metres pressure because she's won this in 31.04. Big time, best time for Sophie Taylor. 31.04. Corey Scott of Edinburgh in second, 31.68. And third place to Rachel Wilson, 32.40. Molly, not quite the speed merchant at 32.93. No, that is so, the time that Sophie Taylor did it has actually put her fifth in the world this year. So a cracking swim. We will expect those world rankings to, to certainly 
be improving over the next couple of weeks when a lot of the, the swimming nations have their swimming championships. But at the minute, that's the fifth fastest time in the world this year. And the swimmer with the second fastest time in the world this year goes in the next and final heat. Oh. Or doesn't, <laughs> as the case may be. Ruta Melitite has decided not to do the 50 breaststroke, so we are down to seven then. So we'll be looking at the likes of Daniel Lowe in five, possibly Haley Monteith in six. Well, this one is too close to call at 25. It is always seen Daniel Lowe in the, in the 400 meters I am, but it looks like it is actually lane number two. Katie Amadid from Hatfield that is just slightly in front and we're coming to the final five metres. It's all about who finishes on the perfect stroke and she does and she wins the final heat in 32.14. Again, a uh, breakthrough time for her, 32.14 for the Hatfield swimmer. Danielle Lowe, 32.42 in second. Cara Hanlon in third. And Katie Matt, 32.77. Remember, they go to semi-finals later on today with the final tomorrow. Can't qualify outright on the 50 metres events unless it's the freestyle. So there'll be no nominations from this competition on the 50 breaststroke, 50 backstroke, or the 50 butterfly. But if the swimmer qualifies for a different event, say the 100 meters butterfly, they can put their case forward to do the 50 butterfly at the Commonwealth Games later on this year. So you can't actually be nominated at this competition, but it's another one of those events where you get in and you, you, you want to see how you're swimming and work on your skills. And that's why you're seeing so many swimmers entering the 50 events. On to the 50 butterfly, as you mentioned, and uh, event number 106 as it is here. And we have four heats of the 50 butterfly. And we'll see Ben Proud, who is one of the fastest swimmers in the world in this event, going a little bit later on. That's uh, the lineup for heat number one. So representatives from Birmingham University, Warren de Bards, City of Manchester Aquatics, Perth City, Loughborough University, Basildon, Guy, and Edinburgh in this one. Joseph Marsh in one, Sean Campsey in two, Sean Muscroft in three, Eamon Rivers in four, Leo Jags in five, David Stevenson in six, Craig Houston in seven, and Matthew Parks in eight. All of these swimmers about uh, 24 to 25 seconds, age range of 18 to 29. Nice wide age range to the oldest man, I mean Craig Houston in seven. Yeah, he was in Melbourne 2006, so he's got a lot of experience. Um, it looks like it is going to be lane number five, Leo Jags from Loughborough University. He's going to take his opening 50 metres butterfly, or does he? He does. Yeah, Good luck. Right. Yeah, 24, 8, 9 is Leo Jags' time. And that, again, is about a half a second uh, better than his entry time. 24, 8, 9 for Leo Jags. Sean Campsey in second. There's the 1 to 7, as it was on this occasion. Well, Sean Muscroft in third and Joseph Marsh in fourth. Certainly from our position here, it looks like they are winning by a considerable margin, but if they don't finish on a full stroke, somebody else can come in and, and take the win away from them, as we saw in the Olympics, certainly in 2008, with Michael Phelps getting that win by 1-100 over Kavik. And again, in 2012, he was on the receiving end of losing. What about Olympians from 2012 in this race, the 100 butterfly swimmer then, 50 butterfly swimmer here, Anthony James going for Plymouth Leander in lane number four, Jamie Graham and Warren Cannon of Glasgow and Bath either side of him. This should be about Anthony James, but who are the young pretenders trying to take his crown? Yeah, but it doesn't look like it is going to be Anthony James, it looks like he's going to be the swimmer in lane number three, Cannon from Bath University. Bath are already had a fantastic meet so far. It is going to be Cannon, 24.41. Selby from Stockport Metro second, and Anthony James third. Yeah, Anthony James, probably not that concerned because there is a semi-final still to come. So that time will be enough to blow the cobwebs off. 24.83 for him, but the winning time from Warren Cannon, 24.41. Liam Selby in second, and Jamie Graham in fourth.
On to heat number three on the 50 Butterfly. That's going to be an interesting scrap. Some good emerging talent here in the centre of the pool. Thomas Laxton, Sam Horrocks, both uh, highly rated by their coaches. Tom Laxton in particular is one of the uh, breakthrough swimmers at the moment. Let's see what he's going to do in the 50 fly here. His entry time, 24.05. I expect him to go quicker than that here. Let's see what uh, Lane 4 can do and if anybody can challenge him. It's a good stroke, but uh, plenty of uh, the swimmers are alongside him. And if anything, it might well be lane five, Sam Horrocks here. Yes, it certainly does look like it in lane number five. It's probably just an arm length ahead. It all depends on who finishes on a full stroke. It looks like Sam, he is going to do that. Sam Horrocks from the City of Manchester Aquatics, 24.38. Tom Luxton second in 24.64. And Benjamin Lowe from Millfield, 24.90. Of course, they've got semis to come, so they don't have to bust a gut this morning as long as they qualify, and they should be good enough times to get through for Horrocks, Laxton, and for Lowe. On to heat number four. Final heat of the men's 50 metres butterfly. And now we're looking at the real speed merchants. Adam Brown in five. Ben Proud. This is going to be a really good head-to-head. -head. Probably not so much today. Maybe not even tonight, but when they get to the final, provided both of them make it through. Of course, we have uh, the future husband, I imagine, of um, Rebecca Adlington in this field. Yes, in lane three, Harry Need. But it is all going to be about lanes four and five. Ben Proud and Adam Brown. Ben Proud, 23.67, his time at a meeting in Nice. Adam Brown's only been off the plane from America for less than 48 hours, so it might be a little bit ring rusty, but uh, Ben Proud likes to go for it big time. He's going for it big time here, and he's going to get the fastest time. Now, how quick is this going to be? This is going to be very quick, very quick indeed. 23.78 for a heat swim. That's just outside the time he did in Marseille. 23.78. Here's the time for Ben Proud, beating Adam Brown by over half a second. Harry Needs in third place. Now, he's doing 23.78 in the heats. What's he going to do when he gets to the final? Well, who knows? He, you know, we talk about blowing away the cobwebs. That certainly will have done that. Whether he's post, whether he was all in there for the 50-foot fly or whether he's very, very relaxed, but no doubt about it. Can Vince him win? Over half a second on a 50 is, is a long way. You see people winning by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or 1 100 over 200, 400 events. So a half a second over a 50 event is you know, a huge margin. Going to be good tonight and good tomorrow, provided that he makes the final. Adam Brown will make that semi-final tonight as well. What a swim there, Ben Proud. That was very fast for a heat swim, wasn't it? Yeah, to go 23 point in the heat, um, I think for him, he'll be really pleased with that swim. Yeah, he must be. And of course, I like when we have the rivalry in British swimming between two swimmers. It builds up the event, but it yeah. also makes increases swim like that, swims like that, yeah. doesn't it? Well, they're both rivals in, in the 50 fly, as, now, as they've just done, but yeah. they're actually both freestylers as well. So mm -hmm. they'll have the rivalry in the 50 freestyle and in that 100 freestyle. Because there's something to be said for the the splash and dash event so we talk about them a lot how fast they are but yeah. it's great to see two swimmers competing such a high level like that to create swims like that isn't it yeah well um speaking of the two there's actually about four or five guys then that were all really close to each other but ben proud did just stand out just a country mile then for me i thought uh -huh. and what was it about his swim that you liked well, I think his finish was really good. He never gave up. He, he knows that it is everything until that last metre that you have to give it all. So he made sure that his last bit was as good as his dive and the, and the first part of his race. Well, it was, it was incredible to watch. I can't wait for, for this evening's session as well. <laughs> so now we move on to the women's 100 metres butterfly. And in terms of heats, we'll bring you five. Here is the lineup for the opening one. Seven go to start. Representing best, we're all Metro, Warren de Baths, Cockermouth, Carnegie, Ealing, and Nova Centurion. Two lengths of the pool in the 100 butterfly. 
Again, we're kind of waiting for some more youngsters to come through. We've uh, had some very good butterfly swimmers over the years, but we could certainly do with a few more and see whether some of the youngsters here, we're looking at uh, age ranges of 15, 16 in heat number one, see whether they can start to put down some, some decent markers at this stage. Yeah, you're absolutely right. 